I think one of the issues in my play is that truth, unfortunately, is in the eyes of the beholder. And uh, even though there are diamet diametrically opposed theories or ideas that are presented, each of these characters believes that they have the truth, except there's no, there's not a coming together. I wish there were, but there's not a coming together. So truth, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on your point of view, is a very fluid issue and idea. Well, talking about Star Pattern, which is about the 1966 U-Texas Austin shooting, the first of what we recognize as contemporary mass shootings, especially on campuses. Um, I was very narrowly focused on this uh, young woman who ran out on the South Mall at great risk to lie down next to uh, the first person shot, an 18-year-old woman who's pregnant. Um, and I wanted to affirm um, the truth of women, women's solidarity in the face of overwhelming terrorism. These women established an island of, they talked about quilting, they talked about their mothers. They, um, I just found it astonishing. Um, and I built the play on what one of the women remembered of, she never lost consciousness. So there's a lot of information about what they talked about and I found it fascinating. Like creating in the middle of the most terrifying scenario, they created this oasis of peace and women's values. Um, and women's truth, in my experience, is very different from mainstream truth. And I wanted to put that on the stage. Also, it was 1966, like 10 minutes before the women's movement exploded on the scene. And Rita, the woman who ran out, is on the verge of divorcing her husband, coming out as a lesbian, founding a women's press, founding a women's art center. She's uh, like many of us of my generation, kind of lost, and but waiting, poised, you know, in a chrysalis stage. And suddenly, this movement arrived, and we found our voices, we found our missions, we changed our identities, we changed our names, and so that to me was a moment of truth, also um, nationally so many of those liberation movements in the 60s, but especially the women's movement. Um, it just freed up people to say what they were really thinking and to be who they really were. And, and I wanna affirm that it takes a movement to do that. You can kind of vaguely know, I, I don't think I'm really present in my life, but I don't know what to do about it. And suddenly we all knew what to do about it. So. I think the truth, um, is in the eye of the beholder nowadays. And um, I think to some degree that's always there, but I think that there is, um, there is a much larger quotient at this point of um, of, of what truth is and what, what the political truths today are. And um, while the play doesn't ask for anything but the individual answer, um, I believe that the way our society has uh, responded uh, to the idea of truth is to grab an opposing viewpoint mm -hmm. or to to attempt to support an opposing viewpoint much of the time. And um, I, I think that's what we're dealing with. And, and I think it's, it's based on the idea that some people are worth more than others. And um, that the play is dealing with that. And so, I mean, I, I believe that there is truth and I believe there is justice, but I don't, I don't think we're dealing with it at all times today. I don't take any break. I have a batting order. And so when I finish a play, there's one that's right there at bat. There's two more that are, you know, um, in line, you know, uh, at different stages of research, preliminary research. Um, the, my play has, um, well, the research is, 
my play, first of all, takes place in 2020. So it's very, it starts in 2020. So it's very contemporary. So if, if the real, uh, and it deals with um, two couples of one of color white. And so my research is like the daily newspaper and the daily news um, coming out on the, on the TV. Um, also, uh, you know, the, the book cast. Um, and um, so that was the research and the writing. Oh, I don't know, six, six months or so, eight months. Um, I would read a little bit of it, a, a, a scene or two. I belong to something called the Stage Rights, a, a playwriting workshop that anybody can come to. And um, this is where I would read it and we would have talk back. And then as, as the news evolved, the play evolved as well. <laughs> um, my reaction to, to reading the play, I think was generally positive. She brought it into stage rights and had members of the group uh, rather than bringing in other people, mostly playwrights, um, read the roles. Um, it was, um, I probably had some notes because <laughs> I generally do, but I, I like this play and I, I think it's, uh, I think it's an important play for today, especially, and, um, and, uh, hopefully I don't know who your audience is or who you're mailing list goes out to or anything like that, but um, hopefully it will appeal to other people. It, it can be different things. I, I think for me, the hook on uh, Star Pattern was, I watched a documentary, uh, amazing animated documentary called Tower about the shooting. And there's this little portion where this 20 year old woman runs out and lies down next to this pregnant woman and you have to understand, hundreds of people are standing around. Ambulances are there, EMTs, all kinds of people. And nobody is making a move to rescue anybody on the South Mall because the shooting is still active. But this 20-year-old art student, she just barrels out there. Hi, I'm Rita. You know, what's your name? And lies down next to her and keeps her conscious. She saves her life because Claire was bleeding out and she knew the boyfriend and the baby were dead. And, you know, it was a good time to leave. And Rita's just like, Claire, Claire, talk to me. You know, um, so that fascinated me. I talked to a lot of my friends. None of us could imagine doing that, particularly at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. And so she intrigued me. It was like, who was this woman? You know, uh, what motivated her? And. Uh, and there was so much documentation about the conversation on the South Mall. So I wanted to put it on the stage. That was the hook was like, and she never talked about it later. Uh, you know, Claire talked about it, but Rita didn't. And I just felt like we need to know about this. We need to lift this woman up. That was an astounding act of heroism. So that was what got me. It's first of all, the play deals and I never use the term, but the power be the, the play begins with the whole idea of a private school introducing critical race theory into the curriculum. Um, and I wanted people to come away with trying to understand why obviously someone of color would think this was very, very, very critical and important to understanding, and also less, perhaps less sympathetic to most people, but important to understand why uh, people of privilege or a couple of privilege who, who um, are in certain ways new, I mean, are living in a white bubble, why they have great difficulty in coming to terms with this kind of thing. So I want it to be a discussion as opposed to, now I've given you the message, this is what you should do, go out and be brave. My vision. Um, we're going to have two rehearsals and the actors have had this script for some time and have read it hopefully a number of times. Um, I think probably visually what I'm seeing basically is, is a simple Zoom reading. 
uh, where they're with one another and relating that way. Um, more importantly, I think I think what's what's really important is that the uh, performances are equally matched, and that I have um, everyone um, fully understanding their character and um, able to bring a full perspective to that character, so that. Um, <clears throat> so that anyone who sees it will be able to, to understand what's going on with these people and that these people are likable, all of them, but they're uh, coming from very different viewpoints, really from four different viewpoints. And to watch the interplay between the women and watch the interplay between the men and vice versa woman to man, woman to man. And finally, to see their, their relationships in their married lives. I think, um, I think it's an important thing to do because I don't want anyone uh, to not have a full reading. And the, the people who are watching it can better able, better be able um, to hopefully understand what's going on and why these people come from where they come. I love, can, I love almost everything about theater. The fact that you're dealing with a live audience. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a performance more than once, it's every night or every uh, matinee is something different. There is a, um, an energy and a synergy that not even the finest uh, motion picture or, or what have you can, can replace. The whole idea of live and um, in the moment. I think um, the main thing I, I love about theater uh, is there's two things. One is the silence the the looking forward uh, to that moment when everyone holds their breath when the first character enters and the last would be that moment as the curtain falls before the applause but that moment that the audience holds their breath and thinks about what they've just seen. I think those are my, my favorite things about theater. I, I second that, the power of live theater and nothing touches the power of it. It's incredibly transformative. I have a special reason for loving theater because I'm autistic and I live on another planet. I live on planet autism, which is a rich but lonely experience. And the only time that I have true intimacy with others is when I'm able to see my work go up on stage and other people actually enter my world, planet autism, for the space of a half hour or two hours or whatever. And I have I suppose uh, feelings that neurotypical f people feel all the time. I only have them during those periods of time because that's the only time I inhabit the same world. We're inhabiting the same world. I can't, I cannot come onto planet neurotypical. I'm not wired that way. But when my plays go up, neurotypical people enter my planet autism and I can't even describe how amazing and wonderful that is and, and rare. Um, so that is a little personal perk, but it is an extraordinarily powerful and dangerous um, thing because you're not talking about something or pointing to it or theorizing or giving steps. You put that world up for real, and our brains are funny. Parts of our brain really feel like we were in that world. It really happened. You know, intellectually, we know we sat in a theater, but part of our brain comes away like, Oh, that's what that's like, you know, um, if I could fly or whatever it is. It's so powerful. Good question. <laughs>